maybe you haven't thought too deeply on sort of like what's the go with Dropbox? Mm. You know, what, that's that's not a company that you hear about a lot anymore. That is actually one funny thing about Dropbox because in the lead up to this episode, I was like, yeah, I'll just what I'll typically do on the way here is <laughs> put the company names into like the information, the FT, whatever, a bunch of different places and just see what Bloomberg, whatever people have been saying about Dropbox. What's, what's the deal with Dropbox? And then usually get their financials and just have a quick quick look at the, the financials. There's a bit of a peek behind the curtains. There is just nothing on, like no one's talking about Dropbox. If you look up Dropbox on the information, the articles that it returns are from like 2016. Yep. It, there's there's not a lot of chat about Dropbox, and even less so about Box. We'll get to that. In a well, little bit. Yeah, we'll get to that stuff because, which is interesting, because they were a really buzzy company for a while. Yeah, absolutely. And they were like kind of revolutionary at the time. Absolutely. Really shook up. I mean, this is, you know, cast your mind back when Dropbox first came out. That was like replacing having fucking USB drives. Yes, that was literally <laughs> what it replaced. Yeah. And no, don't get me wrong. Like Dropbox was unbelievable. It was essential. Yeah. Like, as soon as it came out, it was immediately apparent, oh, this is this, way better. This is unbelievable. This is way cooler. Because, yeah, no one, you know, it used to be that you carried a little fucking 512 megabyte USB stick. Putting things on. Putting doc- yeah, plugging exactly. Plugging in. To people's laptops. Yeah, oh, yeah. Let me, oh, my fucking PowerPoint presentation's on this dry, on this stick. Yeah, and then and keeping track of all that crap. Obviously, that was terrible. And yeah. so, yeah, absolutely. When Dropbox came out, it was a no-brainer. This is a better way to do yeah. things. Yeah, and... It's worth thinking about what was actually the innovation that made Dropbox work. So it first launched in 2007. Uh, The innovation that made it work was actually Amazon launching S3, which was its uh, cloud storage solution Mm. for enterprise and business. Amazon had the great idea of, hey, we can be sort of like the middleman for the way the internet works. We can offer cloud storage and cloud compute, but storage was kind of the main... Yeah, we build... Amazon.com and Amazon.cn and whatnot in these cloud storage buckets. What if we just uh, lease them out to other people? Effectively, yeah. that's well, you know rather than everyone having to have their every company having to have their own storage, we can handle it for them and provide sort of like the software infrastructure that lets them use our data yeah. centers at a cost instead of their own. And anyone who's used AWS even now knows that it's. In my opinion, I know like certain of you devs are like, no, it's it's the best. It makes a lot of sense. It for a normal person, it does not make a lot of sense to have to give friggin' I don't even know what they call like the credential things to like every single action you need to do needs to be given and I am permissions and all this crap. But point being, for Dropbox, I were like, oh, okay, obviously a normal person is not gonna spin up an AWS account and start like sending files or whatever by SMPT and whatnot to like an S3 bucket to have it stored. What if we just put a very nice interface onto that and then basically sell that same amount of storage at with a, a nice margin? That's the business, right? That, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, let's put a nice consumer interface on top of it. 